Time for news from the NCA Money Desk. Devin Murugan joins us. Good evening, Devin. I see big news tonight is that Danel's CEO has resigned. Yeah, you're quite right, Sally. Good evening. State-owned arms manufacturer Danel announcing its CEO, Danny DeToy, has resigned. DeToy will leave his office on the 15th of next month. Danel is yet to give reason, Sally, for DeToy's departure. The state-owned company makes equipment ranging from armored vehicles to attack helicopters and missiles. It has struggled to pay employee salaries amid a liquidity crisis aggravated by the COVID-19 pandemic. But the problems really go beyond COVID-19, Sally. You'll remember in August last year, National Treasury granting the company a 1.8 billion rand lifeline, which Danel said would aid its turnaround plan, Sally. And uh, news on the alcohol ban front, the, the ban on the sales of alcohol, of course, hitting the industry really hard. And alcohol companies are now asking that the so-called sin taxes, excise duties, are, are suspended for this duration. Yeah, that's the response from the alcohol industry. Well, the uh, industry has asked government, you're quite right, to suspend 5 billion rand in sin taxes until the sales ban is lifted. The industry argues that excise tax was imposed at the point of production, with companies now liable for two and a half billion rand a month in excise duties on unsold products in warehouses. And then you have July as well as August. Well, Richard Rushton is the CEO of alcohol maker Distel. He joins us now via Skype. Richard, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. I want to chat about sales patterns in a moment, but let's start with that request for the Sun tax relief. It's a big ask by the industry. How would you justify that call? Good evening, Devin, and to your viewers. Well, you know, uh, in the previous nine-week lockdown, we also proactively engaged with SARS and Treasury over the deferral of payments of excise on the basis that we were unable to sell in order to generate that excise. And the same applies in this instance. We're simply saying that we're unable to sell and therefore cannot pay our excise and uh, therefore have to defer it. Yeah, and of course you have, you have on the production line stock still in warehouses, is that right? That's correct. Uh, what have you been seeing with sales in this on-off restriction pattern, uh, Richard? I'm particularly interested in that window when the ban was lifted because government was concerned about the number of trauma cases in that period. What do you see? Well, in terms of sales, what we saw was an initial splurge in, in obviously buying, return to buying uh, patterns, and ob obviously there were bottlenecks in supply, but more importantly, consumers returned to legal channels to be able to buy their beverage of choice. And there was an initial spike in demand, perhaps for the first 10 days to 14 days, and then those patterns started to level off, and regrettably, we didn't see some level of normality return before another ban was announced. I ask that question, of course, because of government's argument that uh, you see this influx of trauma cases coming in to the hospitals um, when, when that ban was reintroduced. And I, I'm just wondering whether or not you could see a pattern between the alcohol sales again versus what we are seeing that the government is saying is happening on the trauma front at hospitals. Um, Devin, I think we need to re remind ourselves and recall that at the same time, uh, People were allowed to move freely. The curfews were lifted. And, of course, we had 8 million South Africans returning to work. So the movement of people throughout the day and 8 million South Africans returning to work, yes, and the lift of the alcohol ban, all would have contributed to some level of increase in, in trauma. So, you know, we're not suggesting for one moment that alcohol is not a contributing factor, but certainly there were many other factors, as there are again, that may have contributed to that particular increase. All right, so just more than 110,000 industry jobs lost in the first part of the lockdown. Is there talk of job cuts gaining traction at your group? Well, obviously, I mean, uh, job cuts and retrenchments are our very last resort. Uh, those avenues are closing. We estimate that per week of a ban now, approximately 13,000 industry jobs may be lost. And, of course... Many small farmers, wine producers, uh, taverners, and other small enterprises in our township economies and the value chain, the glass industry is one, are all deeply concerned and, and face uh, 
you know, some of them face bankruptcy. We estimate that more than 80 wine farms and wineries may be impacted uh, through bankruptcy. So, yeah, the situation economically is dire for the industry. Richard, just finally, can you give us a sense on how talks are going with government officials on, on a possible solution here? Well, to date, we, we, uh, we have sent letters through to uh, the president, and of course, through to, uh, we, we uh, just post the announcement of the ban, uh, we were referred to the DTI, and we will continue to explore all the avenues possible and available to us to engage with the National Command Council, with the DTI, and indeed the pres president has given this opportunity, um, because we, we want to try and find a solution where livelihoods are protected on the one hand and, of course, lives are saved uh, as a result of the pandemic. All right, we'll leave it there. Richard Rushton is the CEO of uh, Distel. Thanks very much indeed for talking to us.